Hey there again. Um, tonight I'm doing drive shafts, big drive shafts. This is what they used in the Group A E30 M3 when they were doing touring cars, when they had, um, yeah, big power. I, I believe, this is what I believe they were using. Um, this is a standard shaft and that's the output from the differential, the, the cap that comes out the differential drive that the drive shaft bolts to. It's just not been unbolted that one, but it makes it um, easy to explain what's going on here. Um, and this is the hub that goes through a bearing on the rear arm. So the end of the shaft goes through the hub and is bolted on um, and that's how they work. So they, I've been using this type of shaft for quite some time, but I, I do, I've snapped two right here. Um, and I know people say just buy new ones, they're 80 quid or whatever from uh, eBay, but I'd rather put a 30 year old BMW one on than a brand new made, made one. I just, um, I just, I, I want to keep it. I like, like, you know, these from BMW, uh, I think they're 800 pounds each and there's a reason why they're so expensive. So, but it's the BMW ones that have snapped, unless they weren't BMW ones, uh, maybe, I don't know. I don't know, it's, they were on the car. So what these shafts are, are E24, uh, 635 shafts. So they compared, the CV compared to the standard one is massive. And these shafts are the same both ways around. So you can actually have, this can go onto the diff side. Not that I would swap them rounds. I make um, passenger diff side. So I make sure they always rotate in the same direction, um, just so they wear the same. Um, the problem you get with the original output shaft from diff is it's way smaller than this to get onto the uh, new CV, which is much bigger. So this output shaft is from an E36 M3 3 litre, because they use medium case diffs. When they went to 3.2 litre, they used the large case diffs, so they won't fit. Uh, they won't fit into a medium case diff. So these are really hard to get hold of. Um, the shafts are quite easy to get hold of. I've got a spare set, which hopefully I shouldn't have to use, but I thought I might as well get a set because they're not very expensive. These CVs, I think they use them on Porsches and I think Lamborghini and two wheel drive Sierra Cosworths use them as well. And they are pretty cheap. You can buy them for, I think they're, 20 pound each um so the idea is you you put new ones on and change them every couple of years or whatever you don't leave them until they go uh, they're huge so when you, when you look at the comparison to the standard one it's just there yeah, it's just a monster compared to it right so the way these work is different to the way the original ones work these once you've got the bearing in the hub, in the arm, this hub is pressed through. And then on the inside goes this piece, which slides onto the spline and you do the bolt up. So that leaves that piece there. So when you connect this drive shaft to it, it's the same as when you connect it to the diff. It's got the same fitment there. So, this is huge compared to this. So that should stop that problem of them snapping, or no snapping there. That's got rotational load on it, and also it's getting pulled by the nut. So I presume that's why it snapped there, because it's, it's got stress both ways. Um, yeah, so what happens then once you put it all together, the face of the hub is 20 mil further in than the standard one. 
So when you go to put the disc on, the disc rubs against, it won't even fit on. It is, it's too, too far in. So you can get, I think the Z3M have got the offset discs. So that will push the disc out more and that'll probably work. Um, but the whole wheel will be too far in as well. So what I did was I got my friend to 3D print me some like spacers, but they're not the same as a spacer because the spacer doesn't have this extra bit on. This has got a wider bit at the bottom for the disc brake to locate to. The idea being is you put them on the hub and then um, put the disc on top of it. So the disc sits on this shoulder and then the wheel will fit on this piece. So um, I put this on and then I realized, because we did a lot of, well, I say we, my friend did a lot of measuring here to get this angle right over this piece. I sort of realized that it was this piece that was important to, to locate it, which is where the wheel normally is located. So what I did was I got a, 20 mic 5 millimeter spacer and had it machined down five millimeters but leaving a ridge on it for the disc brake to sit on so that way it's very tight once I get it on it's very hard to go off um, that can sit on the hub the discs can sit on the front and then the wheel can locate on the middle bit and it pushes the disc out to the exact same place as it was when it was on the E36 arms, because I was E36 five stud. Um, so that solves that problem. That, and also means you can use the um, brake shoes in the, um, the original drum brakes for your handbrake. That will keep going. Um, and another problem, I believe, is when this comes through here, when the CV comes out, it's too close to the shock absorber. It hits the shock absorber. So this shock absorber pickup point has to be moved. What um, people normally weld a boss on, a threaded boss that goes on to the end, the same angle, and it just pulls the shock absorber back a little bit to keep it away from the um, inner bit of the hub. So I think I'll be all right with this. That's a strengthening bar. That's, I bought the, these arms like this. They already came like that. Um, but that is right in the way of where the handbrake cable goes. But I can work around that. Now, these are five stud. So, I need to be tight, be tight to get off. I presume these have been drilled to make them lighter, but I did buy a spare set because they were relatively easy to get hold of these bits. And I don't know if you could re-drill that to four stud. Quite possibly. I know Island oh was it Island Engineering? Some company actually made had these made to fit this um Part. So you bought these off an E24, and then um, you bought the, you got the bit that was specially made for it, which means you could still use the handbrake, and this piece was 20 mil further out, so it ends up the same geometry as the original one. So you didn't have to put a spacer in it. Um, but they stopped making them; they were so expensive. You can imagine getting something like that made. Um, they and it was so expensive for people to buy them as well. So, if, I mean, I, they did sell quite a few sets, but they saw, said it wasn't worthwhile making any more. So there are some four stud um, flanges out there, but even if you weld them, you might have to weld one of these up. I'm sure you can make that into a four stud. But anyway, I, I'm not doing four stud, I'm going five stud. So I'm not gonna worry about that. So. Basically, I think I'm where I need to be with all the bits I need. So hopefully I'm going to put it all together this weekend and um, 
see if it works. If it does, it's great. I'll, you know, every now and then just put some new CVs on them, um, and they should should last forever with any luck. Someone was saying thousand horsepower they can take. I don't know. I don't think it's down to horsepower. I think it's down to how you drive. And if you've got a drift car, you probably don't need big shafts because you know you're you haven't got. It's not a lot of grip. You're sliding a lot. It's because I've got a rally car off the line. You've got sticky tires. And you're just dumping the clutch. So you that's when I broke both of mine off the start line and it just snapped the shaft each time. So yeah, I think unless you or unless you've got big V8 power or something like that and you want um want bigger shafts. But I'm not I, I'm pretty sure this is where I need to be, but I'll find out more at the weekend. Right, this is the actual rear arm off the rally car and this is the drive shaft that was in it and um, with the through splines and the nuts and this is the new shaft the cvs are just huge compared to the old ones and um, with the um hub this is all put together so this has got the spacer inside and all I need to do, I've got a bracket that goes, I think it goes that way for the Wilwood caliper to go on. So this is just made up from the original one. And I've got to change this handbrake cable because you've got the longer sleeve on the outer to the smaller one. And then that's ready to go on. And it should all line up and be in same as uh, positions it was before. Yeah, I started putting the um, rear arms on and I realized the spaces I'd made, the bit that sticks out for the wheel to locate onto were slightly too narrow. They weren't sticking out enough. So what I've done is I've brought some 30 mil spaces that I can machine, I'll get my friend to machine 10 mil off, leaving an extra five mil sticking out. So that way, everything should locate, and the space is still 20 mil. Um, so I've taken, I've put the original ones back on, because I've got a rally in two weeks, so I've got to make sure the car's all ready for that. So what I'll do is I'll end this video now, because otherwise, this is, I've been doing videos for donkeys on this. I've got so many videos the same on my computer. So I'll just, I'll post this one, and then when I come back from the rally, I'll have uh, plenty of time before I need to use the car again. And I'll put the um, big shafts on then, um, I'll, and I should have all the spaces made up by then. Thanks for watching, and um, hopefully it should all work out all right.